Sounds good. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're so excited to see you all again or to, you know, have you on board for our TELUS World of Science animal encounter today. So my name is Michelle. I am joined by the illustrious John over there. And we have a very special guest for you here today. Um, so here at the Science Center, we do have a few animal ambassadors. And one of them is here to visit with you today. Uh, her name is Alfie. And she is a lovely corn snake. Um, so I'm going to just pick her up here. She's just beside me. So just give me one second. And we'll tell you all about our friend Alfie. All right, come here, my dear. Okay. So here she is. And so this is Alfie. And yeah, isn't she cool? She is a corn snake. Now, one of the reasons why she is called a corn snake is because of the way that she looks. And I see someone has already asked, is that a poisonous snake? No. Our buddy, our friend here, Alfie, is non-venomous. So uh, there's no danger to me or anything. And as you can see, she's pretty happy. She loves to go for walks and she loves to be cuddled. So uh, we are very, um, uh, she really likes to be handled. So there's really no problem with having her be handled like this. So I'm not in any danger and neither is she. So she is a corn snake. And one of the really cool, unique things about corn snakes is their color. So they have a bunch of unique patterns of red and gold and brown. And especially on her stomach there you can see that kind of checkerboard pattern on her on her bottom. And that is a similar, uh, it looks a little bit like a type of corn called maize. And that is where corn snakes are often found is in corn fields. They're not, they don't live here in Alberta. It's uh, awfully cold for uh, snakes like this in Alberta. But these types of snakes, these corn snakes are often found in the wild in uh, cornfields in the United States. And they like to hang out in the cornfields, not because they look like corn or because they like to eat the corn, but because you can, uh, or because they can eat the mice that live in the cornfields. So it's like a big buffet for them. They love to eat mice, they eat rats, they eat uh, bats, small bats, and they will also eat uh, small birds and things like that, fish. We do feed her uh, once a week. She gets a nice big fat mouse on Tuesdays. So she only eats once a week. And um, so, yeah, someone says, what does it eat? She eats mice here at the Science Center. Um, but uh, snakes like this in the wild would eat uh, pretty much anything they can get their hands on if it's small enough. Can you have this snake as a pet? Absolutely you can. But snakes as pets are a lot of work. You really have to pay attention to them. Um, you have to look after them very carefully. They have to have a very particular type of heat and temperature and humidity in their enclosure. And just like having a dog or a cat that you would play with, you have to offer these animals some sort of enrichment, some sort of you know, ways to stimulate them to so that they don't get bored. So we have lots of places for Alfie to hide in her enclosure here at the Science Center. We also take her on lots of walks around the Science Center when um, there's no one here. And we offer her things like this, like right now she's on a bit of an outing. And so she's kind of excited. So you can see she's sticking out her tongue there. She says, oh, hello, everyone. And so right now, the reason why she's sticking out her tongue is she is tasting the air. She's testing the air and smelling the air with her tongue to see like, hey, what's going on here? Is it safe for me? And so that is uh, one of the reasons why she's smelling the air right now. She's just checking out to make sure that everything is nice and safe. And as you can see, she's quite active. She uh, She's really happy to be out of her enclosure. So someone says, how old is she? She's about 10. Uh, we got her about 10 years ago. And when we got her, she was a lot smaller than she is now. So corn snakes, can you unwrap yourself, miss, please, so I can show them. Corn snakes can grow to be about 180 centimeters. So I'll try and show you just how long she is here, if she'll <laughs> let me. So she's very, very, very long. And uh, 
she could grow to be almost two meters long. And uh, when we got her, she was just this little runt of a snake, you know, very, very, very small and very thin. And as you can see, she's grown quite a bit. And snakes in captivity like this will actually live quite a long time. So about 20 years. Um, and so if we uh, look after her and continue to make sure that she gets her vet visits and gets the proper food and exercise, then she should live a nice long time. So, and as you can see, she's a pretty chill snake. She loves to cuddle. She loves to hang out. So yeah, she's so big, isn't she? We are so amazed. And in the wild, so like she's in captivity, so she's already uh, 10 years old. And in the wild, uh, snakes like her uh, would maybe only live to be about five or seven years old because there's a lot of stuff that they have to deal with in the wild. So um, that's why, uh, you know, animal or this animal in captivity here, when she's such looked after really well, she's going to live a lot longer. And so corn snakes uh, like this are similar uh, to snakes that we would find here in Alberta called red-sided garter snakes. So they, you're going to find those. We have them here in Edmonton and uh, a lot of them in the, in the southern part of the province. And you can find them in grasslands and things like that. But at this time of year, they're going to be hibernating. And one of the coolest things I love about snakes is the way that they hibernate. They actually will get together. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of snakes will clamor together in a big snake ball imagine a giant ball of snakes like hundreds of snakes and they will go underground or find a nice sheltered space and they'll sleep there all winter in a hibernaculum and oh I see someone has asked is she okay with people she absolutely is okay with people so um, we have trained Alfie to be comfortable with being held like she is here and when um, we are open to the public sometimes members of the public are able to pet her or touch her and so we want her to be comfortable and not be scared around those people so that's why um, that's why we train her to to be really comfortable around people. So since she was a little tiny snake, we've been training her to uh, to be held, to be handled. So she's pretty good with people. But if you were ever to see a snake like this in the wild or a snake like one of the red-sided garter snakes, we do not uh, suggest that you go pick that up or go handle it like I am handling it. Um, that snake could be scared of you and it could then try to defend itself. Now, while I said before that this snake is non-venomous, she's not poisonous, um, she does in fact have sharp teeth. And so snakes will bite if they are feeling uh, like they need to defend themselves. But as you can see here, she's very calm. They, she's not in any sort of danger and she doesn't feel that she needs to, to defend herself. But if you were to pick up a snake in the wild, it might do that. And so even if it isn't venomous, it might hurt you. Does she have any friends? She doesn't have any snake friends here at the Science Center. Often snakes, unless they're hibernating together, often snakes are found on their own. So she doesn't have a lot of, of snake friends, but she has a lot of human friends. There are a lot of us here at the Science Center who uh, take a great deal of care and make sure that she is uh, you know, looked after and stuff. So uh, she goes to the vet every now and then to make sure that she's doing really well. She's fed once a week. And every single day, there are people here at the Science Center who check on her to make sure that her enclosure is doing okay, that she has enough water, and just to see how she's doing. So um, John's going to hold up something kind of cool here because this is one of the neat things. Yeah, she eats only once a week. Isn't that amazing? I don't. I would be very hangry if I only had to eat once a week. Let me tell you. So John's going to hold up something that has been sitting on my desk, and so there you can see this. That is Alfie's shed. So about once a month, she sheds her skin. Someone said, "Ew." <laughs> yeah, it is kind of gross. It's a little bit like picking, you know, like, like clipping your toenails, I guess. It's not really that, you know, that nice, but it's something that needs to be done. So yeah, you can see just how big it is. Hello, my dear. Um, and so about once a month, 
Alfie actually grows out of her skin. And so her color starts to get a little mottled and gray. She doesn't turn, she's not quite as bright as she is. Her eyes, which are usually clear and black, turn a little bit cloudy. And that tells us that she's getting ready to shed her skin because her old skin is too small. And so she needs to have her new skin. And so what she will do is when she's ready is she'll rub her nose against a rock or a piece of wood or something hard. And then she'll literally slither out of her skin like you taking off a big long sock. It's really, really, really cool. Oh, cool. John has the video. So we can show that up here in a moment here. But yeah, so she can shed her skin usually about once a week or once a month she does that. And so if we're lucky enough, we're able to get that shed out of her um, enclosure so that we can have it to show you, which is really cool. So those of you that grow too big for your skin, you just you know, get different clothes, you get bigger clothes. Uh, Alfie doesn't do that. She just gets new skin. So would you like to show us that video, John? This is just a really, uh, we'll just, there's no sound in the video, so don't worry about that. But we'll show you um, the video of Alfie doing a really cool shed. And Turn my screen here and we'll see if. Perfect. And so you can see, here's Alfie checking it out. And John's going to share his screen in just a moment. And we'll see if we can get that video up for you. Feel free to throw any questions that you have in the chat if you have any questions about Alfie. I can tell you she's getting pretty big. Yeah, her face is very cute. Isn't she adorable? Yeah. Oh, oh, it was there and then it wasn't. It's going to come up again. I have great faith. Maybe I can't do it that way. That's okay. If we can't show it, that's all right. We can, uh, we can just show this here, but we can uh, see that she's nice and colorful right now she's nice and bright so she isn't ready to uh to shed her skin but like i said before she uh eats once a week and therefore she poops once a week too so she usually eats on tuesdays and poops on fridays so i'm kind of glad that today is wednesday so we're kind of right in the middle of that um i do have a story about once she did poop on me and let me tell you snake poop is not a really great uh, yeah, what does snake poop look like? It looks a lot like bird poop, actually, because um, snake poop is a mixture of both urine and feces, so pee and poop all together. And so it's very slimy. It's very smelly. And I was holding her like this one day, and uh, she sort of looked at me, and I could see in her eyes that she said, I'm just really sorry about this, Michelle. And then she just pooped all over me. Oh, and there's the shedding skin. So cool. Thanks, John. So you can see her head. She rubbed her nose against oh something, God. and you can see oh that gray God. part where she just sort of slithers right out of her skin like a big sock. Isn't that amazing? This was when she was a lot smaller, too. So she's gotten a lot bigger. So it's just a really quick video of there how you can see that. She looks like a cheetah underneath. That's a very good observation. Yeah. She does, doesn't she? She's a very, very, very pretty snake. And as you can see, a very chill snake. She loves to go for walks. When she was a lot younger, she did escape once. Were you ever here at that time, John? I don't know. If... Oh, okay, yeah, I get, but it was right around like when she was here for a year or two. And she actually escaped out of her enclosure one time and disappeared into the space gallery for about three days, but we found her. <laughs> so that was good. What other animals do you have here? We have a couple of animals here at the Science Center. We've got a tiger salamander uh, named Tony. And I saw him eating his lunch when I uh, went to pick up Alfie today. And then we also have two sugar gliders, which are similar to uh, flying squirrels that we would see here in North America. Um, but yeah, sugar gliders, they're tiny little ones like this, and they're called Badger and George. Can we see the other animals? Not today, unfortunately. So Tony um, had their lunch today. So it was their feeding day. So we don't generally take the animals out on their feeding days. And then uh, Badger and George are actually nocturnal. Points to anyone who can tell me in the chat what nocturnal means. Oh, that'd be cool. 
So yeah, so Badger and George are nocturnal. And so they probably don't want to be disturbed right now. But uh, they and so that's why we we haven't got them out for a little while. But if you're ever here, if once the Science Center does open again, yeah, they stay up at night. That's exactly it. Good work. So nocturnal means that they're active at nighttime. So um, yeah, so our sugar gliders are nocturnal right now. So they're in the middle of a nice deep sleep. But if you're ever, if the Science Center ever opens again and we're able to have people in the Science Center, you can see Badger and George and Alfie and Tony um, in our nature exchange in our gallery there. We also have one more animal who doesn't usually like to be handled very often. And her name is Shelob and she is a rose haired tarantula and she's gorgeous. She's so pretty, but John and I leave her alone because that's the deal with spiders. They stay in their enclosure and we look at them and say, you're very nice, that's good. So <laughs> John does have a cool video though of our um, one of our salamanders uh, shedding its skin because much like reptiles, amphibians like uh, our salamander do need to shed their skin as well. So do you wanna pull that one up? Thanks, John. So you can see it's a little bit different. You can see the head of the salamander sort of slipping out. It's like slipping out of a big sock. And we've kind of sped it up because it takes a little bit of time. But yeah, you can see there our salamander is shedding its skin. And while the shed of the, the snake skin is comes off in one piece and it's really long and it can be um, kind of held and, and handled, the, the shed from a salamander just sort of looks like a pile of goo at the end and it's kind of gross. <laughs> so that's why we don't usually have a shed on hand from the salamander. So, and what other animals shed their skin? So most amphibians and most reptiles will shed their skin. So, um, and actually, you know what, uh, our, uh, our spider molts as well. So Shelob, our tarantula, she does, um, she molts. And so every so often when she's ready to go, uh, she'll actually lay on her back and it looks like she's dead. And you wonder, you think, oh my goodness, she love is dead. We've killed the spider. But what that is, it's just her kind of getting ready to break out of her, her, you know, her exoskeleton so that she can reveal her new exoskeleton. And then you'll come in there. Uh, it takes a while. It's like overnight. She usually does it. So you come back the next morning and it looks like there are now two spiders in her enclosure, but one of them is the molt or her shed skin. And then one is of course the spider. So yeah, so that was that salamander was Freddy. He was a he was a salamander we had a while ago. But yeah, so we've got our gorgeous animal here named Alfie. And I was trying to think of what else I can tell you about Alfie that I haven't done yet. Oh, one of her talents is camouflage. She's very good at camouflage. So um, uh, an animal like this with all of these wonderful colors can camouflage really well into the sand, into dirt um, and, and things like that. She's not like a chameleon, so she doesn't change colors, but different corn snakes will have a unique pattern on them, just like fingerprints. So every corn snake looks a little bit different. Some will be more bright orange, some will be more brown, some will be more yellow. Um, and they're all very good at camouflaging into their uh, environment. And you see how she's all curled up here? This is one of the neat things about spy or about spiders, about snakes. If you touch the side of your neck, just like this, you'll notice that it's nice and warm, isn't it? Well, that's because we have warm blood. And reptiles, like my friend here, Alfie, they do not have warm blood. They have cold blood. And so, therefore, um, in order to keep warm, these snakes... Uh, they have all sorts of ways to keep warm. So a lot of times you'll find snakes basking in the sun. So they like to sit on rocks or out in the dirt where they can soak up the heat from the sun so that they can stay nice and warm. Or as you can see, she's curled up on my hand here because my hands are really nice and warm right now. So she likes that I'm warm. Oftentimes, if she if we're handling her and she's cold, she'll head up and into like the, around the neck or into the, the lab coat of someone who's handling her. But she seems pretty comfortable today because she's not doing that. So um, yeah, they're very smart. They can keep warm very well. Um, and that's another reason that um, snakes will actually hibernate all together in really big uh, places where lots and lots and lots of snakes are together because they 
you know, tend to generate a little bit more heat underground and when they're with each other than if they were on their own. If snakes if and reptiles, if you may have heard of this, that when it's cold in the south, that iguanas will fall out of trees. And the reason for that is because they are a reptile, they are cold blooded. And when it gets below a certain temperature, and it doesn't have to be very cold, like plus three or plus four, they, um, their bodies just sort of tense up and they can't use their muscles anymore. So there are actually like times in Florida, for example, where they warn people, they're like, watch out for lizards falling out of trees because they get cold. And it doesn't usually hurt them. They're usually okay. Um, because once it warms up again, they start moving and they're good to go. But I can't imagine how surprising that would be to be a lizard and all of a sudden go, oh, it's too cold and then just fall out of a tree. So um, our friend Alfie would do the same. When she's cold, you can really feel that she tenses up and she can't move her muscles quite as well. So her enclosure has um, some really wonderful heat lamps and cool places for her to hide so that she can curl up and have a nap there if she wants. We're actually building her a new enclosure that will have secret passageways and tunnels for her to explore. So if she wants to escape and she doesn't want to talk to people, she can, which is kind of cool. So yeah, she's pretty neat. Does anyone have any questions about Alfie? I'm going to let her kind of tie herself up in a knot. You can watch. Hey, where are you going? There. But if anyone else has questions, does she ever go outside? Good question. Um, once in a while, if it's really warm outside in the summer, um, I know that our staff scientists from the Nature Exchange Gallery have taken Alfie outside before, um, and they'll let her kind of wander around in the grass a little bit, but they're always with her, and they never um, just let her go on her own. Um, one of the reasons is that she's she's an indoor animal she doesn't she wouldn't really understand what to do on her own and she wouldn't survive out here in Canada on their own so she's not an animal that would be from Alberta so we don't want to introduce a species like her outside so hello yeah she's very happy today she would just love she's like the nicest snake I've ever worked with I used to work with another snake a while ago before I worked at the science center and it was a red-sided garter snake and he was very small and he thought he was very large. So he used to try to look really tough all the time and try to like lunge at people. Um, but he was so little that we didn't really believe that he was as tough as he was. Okay, where are you going? <laughs> so she's pretty cute. And do I, I can't, do you see any other information on there that I haven't said yet, John? We've got a few more minutes here, so I want to make sure that I'm giving you all of the info that you can on Al or that I can on Alfie. Okay. Well, we can just watch her slither around here. Hi. She uh, tried to slither her way onto my microphone the other day, so I had to tell her she couldn't do that. She wasn't very happy. She pretty much likes to do whatever she wants. So let's see if I can unravel her again so we can see how long she is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's a very long snake. And very strong. Like, um... That is one of the things like uh, she can do while she's not a true constrictor snake where constrictors are going to wrap themselves around their food to, to crush it. Um, she is very strong. And so like right now I can feel she can wrap herself around my wrist and she can squeeze. It doesn't hurt, but you can definitely feel she's got strength in there. So that would be one way that she could subdue her prey. She could hold on to it. And then, um, as she's eating it, this is really cool. She can unhinge her jaw separately, like one side each. So she can actually sort of pull this side of her jaw and then this side of her jaw so that she can sort of swallow that piece of prey whole. So she'll do that with the mice that we feed her. 
she swallows it whole in one big bite. And that's why we only feed her once a week snakes. It takes a long time for them to digest. So if she eats on a Tuesday and poops on a Friday. That's a long time. And it, in that time, she sleeps most of the time because she's working really hard on digesting that entire mouse that she's had. She doesn't chew. So while we chew our food, it arrives in our stomach and it's already pretty much processed. Um, she has to go through that whole process. The whole thing needs to break down in her stomach um, because she doesn't chew. She just swallows it. So that's one of the ways that snakes have adapted to living in the wild is they don't have to eat as often. But when they do eat, it takes them a while to, to digest. So, right, miss? Yeah, she's pretty cute. <laughs> I love it. She's giving us snake kisses. That is exactly what she's doing. She loves to give snake kisses. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Yeah, if it were up to her, she would just cuddle people all day. She's a very cuddly snake. And I know people don't really think about snakes as being cuddly creatures, but because she's been handled um, so well and she's so used to people she's a very happy snake to be with people so that's a really nice thing so she's a good snake to to uh, handle and to see and for people who might be a little bit afraid of snakes she's a really nice one to uh, to learn about because she's not a threat and she's really pretty and she's lots of fun so she says thank you everybody thank you very much She's going to go back and have a nap and maybe a snack or a drink of water, hey? So thank you to everyone again for joining us. We're so excited to have you here. And Alfie was so excited to uh, be part of the presentation today. Next week is our last one. And I think we're going to be doing a little bit of chemistry next week. Yeah, for St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be very fun. So thank you, everybody. We are uh, really pleased to be here and Hope you have a wonderful evening. Stay safe and stay curious. And Alfie says bye.